Today we are going to go over LoRas. I'll show you where to get them, how to install them locally, how to use them properly, and combine them with one another. And even a small, not recommended bit about using SD 1.5 LoRas. And with that, let's get started. First, we will go to Civit AI, click on the Models tab, and to make this easier, we will go to Filters, and make sure we check the LoRa tab, and go down and check the SDXL 1.0 tab. Make sure everything else is unchecked. Now, you should only see SDXL compatible LoRas. There are several types you can choose from. Some will give you a specific character or art style, while others can be used to enhance an image in some way, such as adding or removing details, or even one specifically to improve eyes. When you find one you want, go to its page, and you will see a download button here. Click that and download it to your LoRa folder. If your model locations are set to the default, it will be Focus Models LoRas. Then save. If you are like me and have another stable diffusion software and change the config file to point to a different folder, then make sure you save it to the correct one. Before we leave this page, we want to take note of a few things that will help using this LoRa. First, we want to make sure that the base model does say SDXL 1.0. And then sometimes you might see this, a trigger word. This is the word or phrase that we want to include into our text prompt to activate this LoRa. Then check the text description for any other helpful info. Here we can see that it recommends starting with a 0.8 value. Sometimes it may recommend a specific model or resolution for best results. Now let's go to focus. If you had it open while downloading the LoRa, let's go into advanced model tab and make sure we hit refresh all files. As long as the downloads are finished, this should let us use our new LoRa's. Now I will select the ALF LoRa I just got and put it to the recommended 0.8 and use the trigger word of ALF person. And there is our ALF. From there we can continue adding more text prompts to put him in different scenarios. Now let me switch it up with a different LoRa, the Jean-Baptiste LoRa. This is a style I like and even inspired some of the thumbnails I have used on the Civit AI page. This also has a trigger word to use. There isn't a mention of any other settings, but looking at the pictures here, we can click on the little icon in the bottom right. This will give us the settings used to create this image. We can see they used a one as the weight, so I will start with that. Back to focus. I'll put the weight in and then the trigger word. And add a little more to the text prompt. Now it looks good, but not quite what we are seeing on the Civit AI website. And that is because we still have our other styles checked. These are great for realism, but can alter stylized characters and images too much. So let's uncheck them and try again. And now we are looking uh, more like the other images. These look good to me, but just for reference, we can try to decrease the weight and see the results. And then we can increase them a bit. Not a big difference, but I still like the weight at one. Now let's try adding another Laura. The Detail Tweaker XL LoRa works a little different. This one makes use of positive and negative weights. Typically, a LoRa that adds a style, character, or something to the environment will only use positive weight values unless otherwise stated on their download page. So on this, we will start with the weight at minus two. And we can see that it is removing detail and makes the image a bit more plain and flat. Setting it to zero will basically deactivate it. But let's crank it up to two and see what it does. And if we compare these three from minus two to zero to plus two, we can see that at two it adds more detail and brush strokes and makes it a bit more on the real side as the minus two makes it a bit more flat and on the cartoon side. Obviously results are going to vary image to image. Saying it adds and removes detail is vague because it's not always going to change in the way you think. Sometimes it will crowd an image with more objects when the setting is high. And on a low setting, it might just change the clothes and may not seem like less actual detail. So again, it's always going to be playing with the settings and changing the text prompt if you aren't quite getting what you hoped. I will add another LoRa on this, and this is a styled LoRa that specializes in creating this dissolve effect. So I will add the trigger word and start with a strength of one. And we can see it start taking effect. I will turn it up a bit more to 1.5 and we get some crazy results. It's one of many lures out there that can really boost your creativity. I think lots of people might overlook some of these options, usually assuming a lure is simply to get a specific character or art style. We also have another detailed type lure called Perfect Eyes XL. This tends to put more color and detail into the eyes. 
Using this myself, I've had the best results with 2D and artistic styled characters. It can work in realism pictures too, but it's not better every time. The last bit of information here is going to be something I wouldn't recommend unless you are really bored or you really want to try SD 1.5 Loris and have no interest in using any other SD software. I say this because the results will be all over the place and not practical, but the option is there, so I figured I would show you. I'm going to reload my page to reset everything. Then I'm going to go back to the model page and I will set a 1.5 checkpoint as a refiner. For this, I will use DreamShaper 8. Also, I want to make sure to remove the default styles. Then I will add a LoRa. This arcane offset is a 1.5 LoRa. I will copy the prompt from this image and then paste it in our text prompt and generate. Now the end result will never be as good as using this the correct way. You will get artifacts and especially multiple faces. And if you are really, really determined to keep using this, you can even go into the debug menu. On the debug tools tab, go down to these two settings. With this, we can set a temporary override resolution of 512 by 512. This will slightly improve the issues, but obviously at the cost of a lower resolution. Again, this isn't something I recommend as it's probably more trouble than it's worth, but it's there. And that's all I have for you guys today. Hope there was something useful here and I will catch you in the next one.